So dear friends, welcome to the exhibition Anselm Kiefer, Questi scritti, quando verranno bruciati, daranno finalmente un po' di luce. These writings, once burnt, finally will give a little bit of light. It's a pleasure and a joy for me to share a little bit about the content and context of this exhibition with you. We are in this magnificent hall uh, in the Palazzo Ducale, a room which is 42 meters long, 16 meters wide, and has been for centuries the home to monumental fresco cycles, paintings that have defined the history of art in the post-Renaissance world. And today we are here with an artist who has taken on the old masters, the Italian painters who defined art history for us. And he has created a 21st century painting cycle in a space where something like this has not been done since the Rinascimento, since the Renaissance. And I'm just going to take you on a little tour so that we can understand a little bit better what is the content, the iconography of these great works. First of all, let me say there is no narrative beginning or end to this cycle of paintings. We are literally in a room where you can stand in the middle, spin around your axis in 360 degrees and begin where you wish. I like to begin with the painting that emanates with golden light and has a ladder in the middle. The source of origin for this ladder comes from the Bible. It's, it's Jacob's ladder. And in Anselmian iconography, it is this ladder that connects the earthly realm with the high heavens above. But when you look at this ladder, it is not a noble aristocratic ladder, it's a feeble one. It's a ladder that you can imagine might fall at any moment. And this is important because while the high heavens call upon us, while we can imagine ourselves ascending to that golden realm high in the sky, that ladder is by no means an easy way up. It might fall, we might falter, because for Anselm Kiefer, humanity is fallible, and we always must be mindful of the ways in which we get caught in our own destructive forces. And of course, where does this ladder emanate from? Where does it rise from? From a modest lagoon, just like the Serenissima Republic, the Republic of Venice, which was the richest city in Europe in the year 1500, rose from modest and humble beginnings in the year 500. So Anselm brings together in this exhibition references to the history of Venice and also to the topography and landscape of Venice. If you now turn a little bit to the right, you will see a seascape. The rolling waves are coming at us. You can almost feel yourself in a stormy day on the shores of Venice as the waves are rushing into the floors uh, of the Palazzo Ducale. And what is this thing that then erupts above these waves? That's what Anselm Kiefer calls an emanation. An emanation is an iconographic motif that he has actually borrowed from the Jewish Kabbalah. So it's an element that connects, again, like Jacob's ladder, the earthly and the heavenly realms in the here and now. It's a flash of the finite and the infinite at one moment connecting divinity with corporeality. These rolling waves that are almost photographically documented in that painting with this magical emanation that gives us a moment of divine light from the high heavens above. Let's continue our walk now towards the middle of the room and a very different work of art uh, dawns before us. A work in which these branches form almost like a Venetian arch. And Venetian arch, arch that you can imagine seeing on the facade of the Palazzo Ducale. And in the middle of this odd landscape, you have a coffin. Whose coffin? Well, at least when Anselm was creating that work, it was the coffin of San Marco. San Marco, whose remains were brought to Venice, according to legend, in the sixth century, and then were kept here until the construction of the Basilica San Marco began, which was to become the home of these remains of the patron saint of Venice. Sadly, however, when the Basilica was being constructed, the remains could not be found. They were lost. Well, legend says that they were then rediscovered, but in this painting, Anselm alludes to this notion 
of the remains being gone, not being found. We are always seeking that which we cannot have, to have those remains that should be there, that would give us the keys to divinity, but they are gone. And we are forever, as humanity, of course, seeking that which is lost. Let's move further along. And we are now in front of one of the largest paintings in this Sala de los Scrutinio. Uh, and as we scrutinize this painting, what we see is an odd sort of visual cross-mapping, as Anselm Kiefer would calling, call it, of elements. There is a landscape that seems to have some snow and ice on it. And along this landscape, you see submarines. And when you raise your gaze up to the upper register of the painting, you see a procession of shopping carts. Let's break down these elements a little bit. So the procession of these shopping carts is actually a reference to a procession of Dodges. The Dodges who built Venice from those modest beginnings into the richest republic in the world. Think of all the goods that came to Venice along the waterways, the ships that brought those goods here, and then think of Venetian naval power that protected these trade routes. Well, those submarines are that naval power. They are the symbol of Venetian power that dominated both the Orient and the Occident and enabled the mercantile power and wealth to flow into the Serenissima Republic. So this painting really uses iconographic elements such as a 21st century or 20th century submarine as a reference point for Venetian naval power and the shopping carts in the upper register are like the procession of the Dodges of Venice who built this city. Let's now turn to look at the painting on the north wall of Sala dello Scrutinio. This is a really um, interesting landscape because the light and the coloration of it is a little bit more, let's say, uplifting and warmer. It's almost like a Tintoretto-esque dance with color and joy. And yet when you look at the bottom register, you again are seeing a lagoon landscape, but a lagoon that is frozen. Now, dear friends, how often does a Venetian lagoon freeze? Not very often. But in Anselm's world, lagoons can freeze, the sky can be filled with fireworks, and this painting on the north wall becomes almost like an altarpiece. An altarpiece that is lacking perhaps the figure that we are used to seeing there, but an altarpiece nevertheless to Venetian climate, tempest, and the temperature of the city. It's a work before which you are meant to contemplate. It's almost like a painting by Turner, where the solid melts into thin air, our dreams and wishes somehow evaporating into these clouds that remind us of fireworks. In fact, when I was in Mr. Kiefer's studio, when he was painting uh, these works, there were some references to fireworks and roller coasters. And at that moment, it became clear to me that he's bringing a roller coaster of life and of history uh, to the Palazzo Ducale. Our next painting is a somewhat darker landscape. Here we have one submarine, not a fleet of them. And something odd is happening to the submarine. It's caught in a net. And there is one of these emanations now, not a vertical emanation, but a horizontal emanation that is almost dissecting the submarine. Perhaps the destinies of empires as well as those of republics are somewhat undulating. So there are moments when the wealth flows in and there are other moments when the submarines, when those naval powers face calamity and they sink. So the journey of humanity as well as the journey of civilizations is not just a simple upward road, it's an up and down. And sometimes we catch ourselves uh, in times of war, suffering and destruction. And of course, it is interesting to look at this exhibition today and these undulating histories of the Republic of Venice when we think of what's happening in Europe at this moment when this exhibition is here in Venice. And as we look at the next large painting uh, in this Sala dello Scrutinio, 
we, what we see is really um, perhaps the most narrative moment in the exhibition. In the upper register, you see the flag, the standard of Venice with the Lion of St. Mark. Uh, and then in the middle, you actually see the Palazzo Ducale, but not the Palazzo Ducale that has been just polished and renovated and built, but a Palazzo Ducale that seems to be on fire. What is happening to Venice here? Is Anselm Kiefer looking to the future and referencing some future horrific incident? Or is he looking simply to the past of human history, suggesting that we will never escape fully the fires and horrors of war? And now when we look at the lower register of the painting, what you see is an endless procession of the remains of humanity. All the children, the adults, the elderly who have lost their lives uh, in the course of the building of this city and indeed in the building of human civilization in general. And finally, a painting that is very abstract, one of the most abstract works here uh, in this uh, Sala de los Scrutinio space. But what you see there are those three emanations. Remember, we saw an emanation earlier in our journey with the seascape. Now there are three emanations that forge their power forth from the lagoon, reaching for the high heavens above. It's like the Venetian Big Bang, and thus begins the cycle of life again. Remember, for Anselm Kiefer, ruins are the necessary prerequisite for rebirth. And the notion of Rinascimento, it's only possible once there has been destruction. So from these ruins, from these burnt writings, something new will be born. Thank you for joining us today on this tour of Anselm Kiefer's exhibition here at the Palazzo Ducale. Truly a historic moment for those of us who have the pleasure of working with living artists. Uh, these moments are not very common and they don't happen very often.